Welcome to episode four of our option scanning series. This is the first episode with a webcam, so welcome to a webcam based intro uh, to episode four of our option scanning series. Uh, in the first episode, we talked a little bit about how to find the highest returning puts available in the market. Episode two, we talked about how to identify those trade opportunities, whether or not they're good or bad. And in episode three, we talked about how to whittle down that sometimes extensive list of options uh, to find some that have some better opportunities. Episode four, we're gonna continue that exercise and talk about a very specific type of criteria, and that's going to be volatility, how we could scan for it, how we could work it into what we're looking for, and more importantly, how we can use different volatility measures in our scanning to identify profitable opportunities. Welcome back to the Hourglass Trader, where as time passes, we make money. All right, to start things off, let's just talk about how to actually scan for volatility, period. So volatility is a metric based on an individual stock. So we're gonna be in the stock hacker here instead of the option hacker. And to scan for volatility, we're simply gonna click add filter. We're gonna click stock because it's a stock metric. And then we're gonna to go to vol index. And I was a little bit unsure before I started filming this as to whether or not this is the same as implied volatility. But if we put this up to like 100% or something, scan for the results, uh, we'll see that if you look at the vol index column here and you've got to scroll a little bit to get to where the numbers start showing up uh, but the vol index column will be the same as the implied volatility column so we're comfortable with that vol index here as our scanning parameter is the same thing as implied volatility now with that said you've got a really long list of stocks you have a thousand different stocks where there's an implied volatility metric for uh, and a lot of these are very, very high implied volatility numbers. And the other thing that we do want to make sure of is that we're scanning in all optionable. You click here, go to category, all optionable, because at the end of the day, we're scanning for options to sell. So we want to make sure that all of our results, again, uh, have options that apply to them. Uh, but with that said, looking at our very first result, NHWK, for example, NHWK, we'll type that in. You'll see that the implied volatility, which we have charted here below the chart, and you could do that quickly by going to studies, add study, all studies, going to the eyes, and then clicking implied volatility. Uh, but we can see here that the data isn't great, right? It's a little bit spotty. It's kind of all over the place. There isn't always implied volatility data. And that really is a function of low volume on the stock. So if you really wanted to cut this list down a little bit, you could add another quick, simple stock based filter, scroll to the bottom, go to volume and maybe say, you know, let's look for something that has 10 million shares traded today. And we go from a thousand different results to 46 different results. Now at the top of the list, we have a lot of the usual suspects, right? We've got Bed Bath & Beyond, Nikola Motors. If you're really following those high ROR put scans that we put together in episode one, you're gonna see a lot of the same names here, like Affirm, you've got BBAI, AMC, you know, again, a lot of the usual suspects. And why is that? And the answer is because the way the options are priced, uh, the higher the implied volatility is, the higher the option premium is gonna be. So in essence, what we've just done here with this stock scan is a little bit duplicative with what we did on the option side of things when we scan for high ROR puts without earnings. Uh, and we're scanning for that 1% re return on risk because presumably anything that has a really large return on risk, a really large option premium is also gonna have high implied volatility. So now the question is, how do we potentially target different types of implied volatility to use to our advantage when selling options, which is where the value in what we're talking about in this episode comes in. And the answer really just comes down to the behavior of the implied volatility. We could take something like AMC, for example. If, if we go to the chart, type in AMC, we're gonna see that yes, AMC does have high implied volatility, right? Our scanner's telling us uh, that AMC's applied volatility is 188%, and we can see that here plotted on the chart. But what we do see looking at the 180 day chart, looking backwards is that while 188% seems like a high implied volatility number, it's actually been about that high over the last 180 days. So this isn't necessarily out of the normal where you could gain potentially a little bit of an advantage or an edge is targeting those opportunities where implied volatility is high, but not always that high, right? With the idea that it'll eventually come back down and as implied volatility comes back down, the option premium gets sucked out. So if we sell those high premiums, the implied volatility comes back down and then the option premium gets sucked out as option sellers, we're gonna make a profit. So how do we target those instances to eliminate the results where we see something where you know, a stock may have really high implied volatility number, but it always has a high implied volatility number. So to do that, uh, we're gonna take this away and we're gonna go, instead of the vol index, we're gonna use something here 
and it's not going to be a stock measure, so we're going to remove that one. And we're going to go to study. And the one that we're going to be looking for is IV percentile. So what is IV percentile? IV percentile is a metric that takes implied volatility as it exists today and compares it to the last year of trading and then lets you know where on a percentile basis that implied volatility rank sits. So if you have a high number like a 90 IV percentile, you know that 90% of the days in the last year the implied volatility has been lower than where it currently sits. So this is a great way to weed out stocks like AMC and that result that we just looked at where implied volatility is high, but it's always kind of high. So if we adjust this and take it between maybe 70 and 100, click scan, what we're gonna come up with is we now have a little bit of a smaller list of 366 stocks, and we can actually bring IV percentile in as a column uh, as we scan through these results. And if you don't have the IV percentile column right here, all you have to do is go out to the right, hit that little gear, go to customize, and then look up IV underscore and it's right there IV percentile and you could add that to your results here so if we sort this and we want to make sure look there's 366 results the default here is to show us 50 we want to make sure that we see all the results so we're going to hit that scan again there you go and then what you want to do is sort by this IV percentile column so what we have here again is a lot of different results so I think typically it's best to you know add some more filters here to eliminate some of these results that we don't really want to have the first filter that we're going to add because we see here there's a lot of 70 cents this thing's trading for 78 uh, 56 cents we don't really want to look at any of these stocks down under a dollar or two because if we're trying to get to a point where we want to sell options on these a stock trading for less than a dollar they're really aren't going to be many useful option strikes in general to sell on this. So we want to add the stock filter, look at the last price that something traded for, and we want the minimum to be two. And once we scan, we go from 366 results, and we are now going to have 267 different results. And this is still a lot because you see a lot of stocks here. For example, if you look at EMTY, we could go to the chart. And, you know, again, we see that spotty implied volatility metric that we saw when we first looked at that implied volatility scan that we ran. So the last thing that I'm going to want to add here is a simple stock volume filter. Go to volume and we're going to make the minimum 2 million. And I think that's 2 million. It's tough to tell without the commas. Boom, nailed it. So we click the scan again and we go from 267 results from our last scan. And this time we are gonna have just 23 different results. So there you go. You'll remember at the very beginning when we ran that very initial implied volatility scan, we had I think slightly over a thousand different stocks show up. Now that we've filtered for stocks where implied volatility is unusually high, uh, added a last filter of a dollar and above, and then had a volume filter of two million and above. Uh, we are now down to 23 different results. And if we want to move this back up to $2, I think it got changed because I pulled something in there. Uh, there you go. We're now down to 20 different results. So if you have this sorted the way we do in descending order by IV percentile, we're going to see, for example, Dish trading at $8.08 .08 is at a 100 IV percentile. So what does that exactly mean? And how do we interpret these results more importantly to come up with the trade idea? Uh, so if we take a look at DISH, you're going to see a lot of different things. And I like to look at a lot of these on a one-year basis because, again, that implied volatility percentile metric that we just brought in is on a one-year basis. So it's trading at a one-year low down to $8.08. .08. RSI is down to 30, so we know that that's a little bit oversold. Uh, and implied volatility, there you have it, right? And, again, we'll pull up that AMC chart so we can compare. We see that, yes, AMC implied volatility is high, but it's been much higher historically. If we go to DISH, Implied volatility is high, and two, it hasn't really been this high historically, right? That 100 IV percentile means it's at the exact highest point in the last calendar year, and that's exactly what we're seeing as we take a look at this blue line representing implied volatility. So what I like to do here when you get a little bit of a convergence between oversold RSI and high implied volatility is not necessarily look at that for a weekly entry, but potentially take a look at a longer term entry. Uh, where you could sell deep out of the money puts, taking advantage of the expanded implied volatility and a little bit of the oversold action to create a bullish position. And I actually did this uh, just yesterday. If you go look at June, you're going to see that we sold the five strike puts on DISH. 
Now, why do we do this? Uh, the very first reason is that the five strike puts are relatively deep out of the money. We have about a $3 cushion, which on an $8 stock is just south of a 50% cushion. Uh, and in fact, I actually sold these yesterday uh, when Dish was about a dollar higher. So we had a roughly 50% cushion when we went into that. Uh, two, what we also know about out of the money options is that the decay curve is a little bit different when you hit that 45 to 60 day range. I don't have it in front of me right now, but hopefully I can edit into the video right here and it'll show you, boom, we got the finger lined up. Uh, and on that curve, you could see that those out of the money options decay a little bit more rapidly in that 45 to 60 day window. So with these June options right here, we have a 65 day till expiry target. Uh, so we're right on the front end of that accelerated decay window. Uh, and the great part about this as well is we know that on a one week basis, we like to target 1% ROR or 1% return on risk in our trades. Uh, this is about nine and a half weeks away and it generates about nine and a half percent ROR. So while this may not be a week after week after week after week trade where we get one, 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 if this hits max profit over the next nine and a half weeks and we get nine and a half percent, that's the equivalent of getting 1% ROR per week. Uh, and additionally, one other thing we'd like to talk about is that these longer dated deeper out of the money options, if you are a margin based trader, require a little bit less buying power. So if we go to return on capital, you'll see that it jumps up to a 42.5% return on capital. Now, in the interest of being conservative and transparent, we don't really like to use those numbers because I think it's a little bit clickbaity. But if you are a margin trader, that's what your return on capital would be looking like. Because uh, again, your recourse here, if it falls below that break even price, for example, if you sold those for 40 cents today, your break even would be 460. Your recourse, if it falls below 460, is simply to take assignments. So we want to make sure that we're calculating our returns based on the amount of cash that would be required to take assignment. Uh, and that's why we like to look at that ROR metric. Uh, but that's a great example of how you can quickly scan for volatility and then also cut some of those things down a little bit. And remember, we can also save this stock scanner if we go to personal. We've saved this down as our HTIV rank scanner, uh, which is why the $1 last price popped up because I accidentally pulled in the preset before I finished. Uh, and we could have that saved down, go to our option hacker. Remember that first option scan that we built in episode one. Uh, and remember in episode three, when we use that intersect feature, we can now use the intersect feature with the IV rank scanner. So we could pull this very same high ROR option scan that we've had uh, and intersect it with the HT IV rank scanner. And there you go. You're going to see dish is an example of one that pulls up. So you get an even more focused list on an option basis. Uh, and for the purpose of the example, let's go ahead and take a look at NVAX, which is the other one that pops up. Uh, it's a little bit overbought, so definitely different, but from an implied volatility perspective, you've again isolated that trend of a higher implied volatility as compared to the last calendar year. So that's a great example of how you could use both implied volatility and implied volatility percentile in your scans and use them to further whittle down those lists of really good option selling opportunities that we've been building on episode by episode so far in this series. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. I think there's been about a one year gap between episode three and episode four. Rest assured that is no longer going to be the case. We've got hopefully episode five coming up very, very quickly. So feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already so you could be sure that you are up to date when that video drops.